Hey guys, it's Kyle from Incredible Props, and today we're going to be working on a few different pieces for the Lawbringer tutorial series. You're going to start off by using some craft foam, roughly 2 millimeters in thickness, and cut out some strips that are 1 and 7 8 inches wide by two of them being 13 inches in length and another being 15 inches in length. There is no template for this if you did purchase a template, which can be found in the description. And we're going to make these look like leather belt. So we're going to crumple up some tin foil and use an iron or a heat gun and press it into the foam, work it over in these sections and just keep it there until you have the textured in. I did this on both sides and here you can see on screen what that texture, texture looks like afterwards. Here we're going to be marking out where we want some full rivets to go. I used a ruler to space it. Uh, you can add a lot more rivets, just make sure that the spacing and then lining up across all three pieces is consistent. So just use a sharpie to mark them out and then we're going to use some hot glue to glue down some googly eyes. Once set down, there's going to be two templates of circles in red. One's going to be smaller than the other. The smaller one is going to be stacked on top of the other one like you currently see. And those are going to be glued down at the very bottom of those pieces of craft foam. And we're going to secure those to the end of the belts by using some hot glue. Now these are going to be attached at the bottom of our chest piece which hasn't been made yet but I want this to be removable so I'm going to be adding some velcro to be able to allow it to be attached and detached. So the one part's going to be hot glued onto the top of the belt and the other part is going to be portioned and centered in the middle of the chest piece. Once we have that done we're going to be sealing the leather foam in some black mod podge and we're going to cover it in one to two coats both sides. Once that's done you're going to use some brown paint to try and emulate leather. I use some oil paint but using acrylic will obviously work as well. Make sure you're covering the front and back as well as the edges. To color the rivets I use a dark silver and we're just going to be painting those circles at the very bottom like the buckles and painting over the googly eyes to act like full rivet and once you have that all done this is what it's going to look like i did not cover this in the clear gloss finish that is optional if you want to do but that is something i did not do for my part on this build moving on to the fabric tabards i cut out some blue navy blue and white pieces i did not measure the length of them i kept them extra long so i had some extra material to work with when weathering and I cut out each rectangular piece to be about 9 inches in width. This is to account for extra seam allowance on both sides when keeping the edges nice and connecting it together. And then I used an iron to help crease and fold and hold these edges while I was able to pin them down to sew them. Once you have everything laid out and pinned the way you want it to, we're going to be moving on to stitching those seams. So stitching those edges and we're going to get some nice seams by going slowly using pins, making sure you have everything the way you want it to be. Once you have the white and blue edges stitched together, you're gonna wanna stitch both halves together to get them the way you want it to be. And once you have that done, you're gonna cut up some excess at the very bottom. You wanna cut up the excess at the very bottom using some scissors. If you wanna see a further process on how I weathered these fabric cassettes, I did that in a separate video and there'll be an I card or you can check in the description to take you to the link to see that video and where I did that process. Moving on to the pauldron spikes, we're gonna be using this template from the template package. We're gonna be tracing it onto two millimeter foam if you want the spikes to be larger, you can obviously increase the size of your circle. And if you want them to be much taller, you can cut out a larger triangle section for you to have to glue together. Uh, if you use the same template as that I did, this is what they're going to look like. And you're going to want to trace out three for each pauldron. I used the same pauldron template that is already up on YouTube, except I increased the size to be more appropriate to fit with the rest of the scale of my costume. And then I hot glued it onto place and did the same process of all the other armor bits, used Mod Podge mixed with black acrylic paint, put on a couple layers, did the same base coat of metallic paint using a white, or sorry, a silver the, to dry brush and add some highlight to some edges. To add some weathering to blend all the parts together, I used some black wash and brown mixed it together and that was it. You can leave it there if you want. If you want to add some colors to add to match your tabard, I went with some white and a navy blue and I used a tape to kind of mask the one side so that it didn't cross over to my section where I want the other paint to be. 
So what I did was I just stippled this on and I used a navy blue paint as well as a lighter blue paint to add some inconsistencies and variations. And you can go over this in a wash further if you wanted to. I did not. And once I did this process, I just used the Rust-Oleum clear gloss finish to seal and protect this paint as well as giving it the shine that it needs since the acrylic paint that's blue and white is matte. Adding this acrylic, sorry, adding this gloss finish to seal it will help give it that shine that it doesn't have since it's a matte finish. As for the chainmail shirt, which you guys have seen me wearing for when I've done some of the uh, posing pictures, uh, this I purchased from Amazon. Uh, it was a 44 or 42 size. Um, I don't have the packaging on it, but I do have the Amazon link from where I purchased it. You might be able to find it in some costume stores. It's got like this cross passage, not really cross pattern, zigzagging stitch that goes down the shirt and the arms. It also came with a tunic uh, that covers my head and it's just like a, a balaclava if you know what that is. Um, but that came along with it on top of coming with the shirt. It has a very thin material, black, that's lining it. So it's, it's kind of see-through, but not really. Um, and here you can see it's separated from it. It's very lightweight. I only wear this. I don't wear another shirt underneath when I have the costume on, simply due to the ease of strapping and how I have the measurements set for uh, those straps on my armor pieces so they can make it easily uh, to put on and off so I only have I only wear this when I do wear it um, and it's quite comfortable the sleeves are a little bit long um, obviously it's a little bit baggy which is kind of great it adds to the uh, chainmail like that it's trying to emulate and it's meant the size was a little bit larger I only saw one size when I purchased it um, it came with free shipping and it was on sale and I mentioned in the beginning as uh, about around $40 Canadian. So probably a little bit cheaper for those who are in the US or UK. But then you guys might have to worry about shipping. Um, really great. Would recommend it for a chainmail alternative if you guys don't have an actual chainmail shirt. Um, get some movement so you guys can see kind of like what it looks like when it's moving. So anyways... That's the shirt. The jeans that I wear are, let me see, just a pair of jeans from American Eagle. These aren't the ones I wore, but you know, they work. Um, so I just have a spare pair of jeans that have been kind of tattered and worn. It doesn't really matter about the pockets because the pockets w won't be seen since they'll be tucked underneath the armor and how this drapes, it kind of covers those pockets. So you can obviously go to extents of weathering it, but I don't think you really need to weather the jeans, uh, which is the type of material that is used in the Lawbringer armor from what I've seen online. But simply, you, you don't need to weather them really since they're covered by the hip plates for a good portion, as well as the kneecaps and just other foam armor pieces. So anyways, guys, um, that's the second last tutorial portion for the Lawbringer armor series. I hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, templates can be purchased in the link in the description. Any videos and uh, other parts that have been mentioned to other links will also be mentioned within the description as well as materials used. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit thumbs up and subscribe if you want to stay tuned for more cosplaying videos. If you guys have any questions about this build or want to recommend future things for me to build or want to critique my work then by all means comment i try and get back to everyone uh but sometimes it doesn't always work with youtube giving me the notification so anyways i hope you guys have a good day and this has been kyle from gretel props bye